Hello some pilots, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's Vatsim for Beginners tutorial video and this one is about taxing. In this episode, I'm going to give you six tips to taxi like a pro when flying on the Vatsim network. One of the most common errors we see pilots making on the network is during the taxi phase, whether it be reading back the instructions incorrectly, not following those taxi instructions or completely just winging it and so not even using the correct charts for the taxiways at the airport they're at. With adequate planning and preparation, we can ensure a trouble-free session on the Vatsim network which helps add that level of realism that we some pilots are striving for in the first place. Don't be this guy. Alrighty, so tip number one, always have charts available and make sure you use them when you're on the VATSIM network. Now I use Navigraph, it is a paid subscription and I know that's not an option for everybody. So there is a free alternative which we'll get to in a minute. But for now what we're looking at is the airport diagram for Frankfurt. Now I know at first glance this can look a little bit complicated but once we get used to the layout and we are familiar with what we are looking at it does become quite easy. So you see a whole lot of letters and numbers all over the place but what it's really showing you is just the letters and the numbers of the main taxiways and the smaller taxiways in between them as well as intermediate holding points and uh, main holding points between the different runways. So for example this chart in front of us you can see it's a little bit hard to read on this chart we have the marked taxiway, which is this main taxiway that runs parallel between the 25 left and 25 center. We also have the Lima taxiway, which runs down here, the November taxiway, which runs over here. And then we also have these smaller taxiways in between. For example, we have Mark 21, Mark 17, Mark 11 over here. This way you have Mark 9, Mark 13, Mark 15, and so on and so forth. Now, an easier way to look at all of this is to look at the taxi chart overview or the parking stand chart. It is a little bit less cluttered and you can see it a little bit easier. So same thing over here, you can see we have the main taxiway Mark, Mark 17, Mark 15, Mark 21, Mark 19. And then here we have holding points, these little dashes over here where you can hold before crossing the runway, waiting for permission to cross the runway. Now this is a little bit of a complicated one. You do get uh, easier, less complicated ones at smaller airports. We'll have a look at that in a second. But um, first things first you want to do is you want to make sure you know how to read these charts. So not only do you want to look at the ground charts, you also want to look at the parking stand charts because you can see these also, they're a little bit more zoomed in. And here you can see the taxiways a little bit uh, easier. So here we have Lima, here we have November, November 4, November 3, November 5 runs over here, November 6, November 7 blue, November 7 orange and so forth. Now these are where there's uh, multiple taxiways next to each other for spacing and they have different colors at uh, Frankfurt. Now as I said, another thing you want to do is when you're looking at the charts, make sure you read through the airport briefing chart. Just read through it once the first time you're flying through this airport. I know it can be a little bit tedious to read through so many pages. It's only going to take you 10 minutes or so and you'll find some valuable information in these charts about how procedures work at the different airports. Now, as I said, we have an alternative to Navigraph and that is something called ChartFox. Now it is a little bit less detailed than Navigraph. Now over here this is exactly the same chart we were looking at earlier at Frankfurt. This time just on ChartFox and you can see the same thing. Here we have the Mark taxiway, here we have the Lima taxiway and your different smaller taxiways in between the two runways. So for ChartFox as I said everything is available that is available on Navigraph. It is free it's just a little bit harder to read in my opinion. But as you can see here, we have the same thing with the different stand numbers, the different taxiways, different colors. It's definitely usable for flying on the VATSIM network and it is 100% free. All you need to use chartfox.org is your VATSIM credentials to log in and you should all have that by now if you are watching this video. Right, so obviously once you know how to read these charts, you need to know what you're looking for on the ground at the airport. So if I bring up a scenery, all right, so we're here on the ground at Frankfurt and this taxiway marker in front of us, the one that says November 6th, November, this is where we are. So the yellow letter on the black background is the taxiway we're currently on and the yellow background with the black letter is the taxiway to that direction. For example, this aircraft is taxiing along November and if he took a left turn where he is now, he would be heading on November 6th. So if I bring up ground chart again this is where he is so this is November over here and here's November 6 so this ground marker is about over there so this aircraft is about right here all right so he's taxing along November he's probably heading towards 
uh, runway 25 cents up for takeoff. All right, here's another example, and this is on the ground at uh, Gatwick. So here on the left-hand side of the taxiway, you can see we have Papa and we have Kilo, but Papa is the taxiway we are on, and that's the one to the right, and Kilo is the one we're about to cross from left to right. So if we were taxiing up this taxiway over here, we'd be on Papa, and this is Kilo over here. And to see that, if we bring up Gatwick's chart, you can see here we have Papa, and here we have Kilo, and if I bring up the parking stands, it'll be a little bit easier to see. So this is Papa and this is Kilo that runs left to right. So this sign is about here. Wait, let's look at that picture again. Yeah, so this sign is like over here where all these aircraft are parked. So we'd be taxing up Papa and then Kilo would be running this way across. That's just another example. Yeah, you can see it a lot more detailed. This is what I like about Navigraph, is that you can zoom right into the ground and then you can see here's Papa, here's Kilo running left to right. Let's find one more example and then we'll move on to tip number two. All right, so here's an example at uh, Schiphol International. This one's a little bit different here. We have the taxiway markings on the ground. All right, so looking at these markings, I know I'm reading them upside down. We have Echo 6, we have Bravo, and we have Papa 3. And I can't read the last two at the bottom. But based on these markings, if I look for the charts for uh skipple but based on these markings if i go to the ground chart for skipple we'll probably be able to find it so we have bravo running up that way we're holding point echo six in the distance and papa three on the right so if i bring up the chart we have bravo which is let's look for the more detailed one rather so i reckon this is probably about here where it's not too detailed on this chart we have bravo we have echo 5 over there and i think echo 6 runs up there somewhere so let me just find if we go to the airport yeah there's echo 6 over there so yeah we have bravo there we have echo 6 and uh other one was papa hey papa something papa 2 there we go so this is over here that's where that uh, picture was taken. So we have this area over here we're looking at for that example. Alrighty, so let's move on to tip number two, and that is to plan your taxi even before you get your taxi clearance from ATC. This is going to make copying the instructions much easier if you already anticipate that you know what they're going to say. Now you're probably not going to get it completely correct the first time or any time, but having an idea of more or less what instructions you might be given is going to make it easier for you to copy down those instructions. So for example, if we are parked here at, let's say, uh, let's just find a stand here near a runway. Let's say we are parked at uh, Bravo 27 over here. All right, and we're gonna push back obviously facing south. This is Alpha 4 Whiskey. This is Alpha, this is Bravo. Now we can see by these arrows, Alpha runs down, Bravo runs up. Now you already know which runway you're taking off of. So you know where more or less you're gonna taxi. Let's say, for example, you're taking off of runway 24 today, which is right here, close to where we parked. We know we need to get to one of these holding points. So we know Alpha runs down, Bravo runs up, usually. There are cases where ATC can give you different instructions where you're going to taxi up Bravo, or up Alpha, excuse me, and down Bravo. It can happen depending on the traffic and uh, where ATC is sending you. So for this example, let's say you are going to taxi from Bravo 27 to holding point Sierra 7. You can expect that you'll probably get down Alpha 4 Whiskey. He might not even tell you that because you're already on that, but you're gonna go down Alpha 4, then up Bravo to holding point Sierra 7, which is this one over here. Now, he could give you something completely different. He could tell you taxi up Alpha, Alpha 7 to Sierra 7. He could tell you taxi down, he could just tell you taxi to Sierra 7. So then you must know that you're going to take Alpha 4 Bravo to Sierra 7 because that's the right way you would taxi from where you are parked. Now, if you write that down and then when you ask for clearance and he gives you that same thing, you're already expecting it. So it makes it, it just makes it easier to understand what he's saying when he says it. And then you want to do the same thing before you land. You want to probably just brief the airport diagram and see which way you're going to have to navigate to get to your parking. So although you won't have your gate or your stand number before you arrive, once you know your arrival runway, 
at your destination let's say for example we're driving here at uh, runway two five left at uh, frankfurt we know that once we've come to a stop we want to vacate to the right and not to the left because we're going to go to the terminal somewhere up here north so let's say for example you got off the runway at uh, mike 21 you'll probably be told to taxi to, along mike to mike 30 and hold there before you cross runway 25 center and then maybe along lima and then you'll be given further text instructions to find your gate and that brings me on to tip number three, which is always write down your taxi instructions. Doesn't matter how small these instructions are, get into the habit of writing down every single letter, holding point, runway crossing, etc. Because when you get to the bigger airports like Schiphol or Frankfurt, for example, it's a good habit to have. And the taxi instructions come a lot faster and there's a lot more of them. So um, make sure that when he says taxi via Bravo to Sierra 7, Obviously, write it down on a piece of paper. It's much quicker than writing it down on this little scribbly pad over here. So I would make sure that I have a piece of paper and a pen in front of me. And I would write down, if he says Alpha 4, Bravo, Sierra 7, I would just write down A4, B, S7, and then I would read it back. Right, then also, if you don't understand what he's telling you, or you didn't hear properly what he told you, ask the controller to say again. Don't just guess the taxi instructions. Ask him to say again if you're not sure what he says, because by guessing, he's going to know you guessed because, first of all, you're not going to be able to read it back properly. And second of all, you're going to go the wrong way. And as I said earlier, don't be this guy. All right, then make sure you check your whole route before you begin your taxi. Let's say you parked a little bit further away from the runway and maybe you are, I don't know, over here somewhere on the north and you're going to taxi all the way down to runway 24 at Sierra 7. Now, Skip is actually not that bad because the taxiway runs all the way around, but you might be told to hold a certain uh, holding point. So let's say, for example, you're here at uh, maybe Golf 6. Let's say you parked here and you need to taxi to 24, which is all the way down here. You're going to want to get your taxi route and you're going to make sure that you want to check the whole route before you start taxiing. So you're going to taxi route that says taxi via Alpha. Hold at Alpha 12, for example, because there's other traffic taxiing over here. So you're going to start your taxi. You're going to taxi, all, you take a left on Alpha, excuse me, a right on Alpha. You're going to go all the way down, down. And then when you get to Alpha 12, you're going to stop here. You're not going to go any further until you get clearance to go further. Make sure you don't go further than your clearance limit when you are taxiing. If you get told to taxi all the way to Sierra 7, then you can taxi all the way down and don't have to worry about anything until you get there. But make sure you're listening out for your call sign because you never know. There are other aircraft on the ground. People are going to make mistakes. Somebody might taxi in your front of your route and then they're going to tell you to hold position or to give way to a, another aircraft. So make sure you check your entire route before you begin your taxi. Right, then tip number four, make sure that you taxi nice and slow. A nice controlled taxi. I say about 10 knots is a good average speed for a taxi. Maybe you can go up to 15 knots if you've got a far taxi maybe you got a taxi to the other end of the world at uh, runway 36 left here at uh, Schiphol it is far away and taxi can take sometimes 20 minutes so you might want to give it a little bit more speed on the straight so when you're long alpha or up uh, Victor you can give it a little bit more speed obviously slow down for the turns but I would say anything between 10 and 15 knots is uh, perfectly acceptable remember in the sim we are flying these airliners single pilot we don't have a co-pilot to help us do everything else so we got to do other things while we're taxiing. We're busy doing before takeoff checklists, checking the aircraft, making sure the cabin is ready, stuff like that. And we don't have the uh, co-pilot to help us out. So we got to do everything and monitor the taxi. So a nice, slow, controlled taxi is always advisable. Right, then tip number five, and uh, this is quite an important one, is always start at smaller, less complicated airports and maybe park closer to the runway if possible when you're starting out on the VATSIM network. It's a tip I've been giving to VATSIM beginners since the beginning of time, that's a lot of beginnings, is to start off at a smaller, less complicated airport. For example, here is uh, Manchester. I know this might look a little bit more complicated than uh, need be, but it's really not once you get the hang of it. So we've got the two runways running parallel next to each other, two, three left and two, three right. And obviously if you are, if they're using two, three, you might be taking off two, three left or two, three right. Sometimes you can take off two, three right, sometimes two, three left. But you'll park normally here at around one of these piers, A, B, or C. 
and it's really easy to get across this runway to here or up here or even down here if you're taking off of 05 left. Now, if we go to the parking stand coordinate chart, as I said, this one's a little bit more detailed but less cluttered at the same time. So these taxiways are just one or two taxiways to get you to your holding point. So if you can see that they're using 2-3 right at this airport, nothing wrong with parking right here at one of these stands, 5-5-5-4-5-3, five, 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 four, five, etc. That way, when you push back, you get instructions, instructions of taxi to holding point Juliet 1 via Juliet. Easy peasy. Or taxi to holding point Mike 1 via Juliet. Nice and easy. If you want to expand your taxi instructions, then start parking further away from the runway. Maybe move it up here or up here to the PSC. Here you might get a more complicated taxi instruction. Let's say you parked here at stand 25, you push back facing this way. They're going to tell you taxi holding point Juliet 1 via Lima, Papa, Kilo, Juliet, and then to your holding point. So that way it's a couple more letters to write down but it's much more rewarding when you taxi further away from the runway and you find your way around the airport. So like the example I just used, your holding point is Juliet 1. You're going to get taxi via Lima, Papa, Kilo, Juliet, hold Juliet 1 for runway 23 right. So easy. You're going to taxi down Lima. Then you're going to go into Papa. You're going to take left onto Kilo. This Kilo is going to become Juliet. And then you're going to hold it, Juliet 1, when you get there. And then you'll get further instructions if ATC online. If only ground is online, they're going to hand you over to Unicom. If tower is online, they're going to hand you over to tower, and tower will give you your takeoff instructions. So a nice smaller airport, less complicated taxiways, and um, just to get the hang of copying down taxi instructions. If you want to take it one step even easier, we've got uh, I've got um, this is Liverpool in the UK. Now this one is as bad as basic as you're going to get. Here you have one main taxiway, which is Alpha. You have a few smaller ones: Echo, Foxtrot, Golf. And here's Delta and Charlie. This is very basic. You're not going to get any more basic than this. So yeah, you're going to park over here on the stand somewhere. You're going to push back depending on which runway you're taking off of. And you get an instruction like uh, taxi holding points Alpha 1 via Alpha. And that's as plain as simple as you're going to get. You're not going to get any more simpler than something like this. Alrighty, then the final tip, tip number six, is to use add-on scenery where possible. Microsoft Flight Simulator's default scenery is lacking when it comes to the ground markings on the default airports. Uh, even some of the handcrafted airports, the taxiway markings and the taxiway signage is completely wrong. So where you can download a add-on scenery for the airport you're flying in and out of, it's definitely recommended. Some payware scenery is beautiful. You do get some beautiful freeware scenery. For example, this is freeware scenery of uh, Gatwick and it's absolutely fantastic. That is uh, on flightsim.to and as I said, it's completely free, download it, put it in your sim and taxi around this airport. It is fantastic. Here we have a uh, scenery for Amsterdam. This is Fly Tampa scenery. So this is payware, but it's really fantastic. It is really accurate and uh, comes with all the proper ground markings, taxiway signage, gates, jetways. It's got uh, parking, docking systems and everything. So where you can uh, put add on scenery for the airports you're flying at, definitely make sure that you can do that. Right, I think we have just about covered everything that's going to make navigating the airports in Microsoft Flight Simulator and on the VATSIM network much easier for you, so we will leave it there for today. Before we go, I'd just like to remind everyone about our partnership with Aviation All. Use the link in the description to get yourself a discount on some cool aviation accessories and you'll be supporting us as well. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done so, and then check out this video on your screen now.